Hey friends, how's it going? So, uh, today I'm kind of doing a few little chores out in the garden today. I just mowed the grass, and um, I think in the last video I mentioned that my husband's sister dug up a bunch of irises uh, at her house and give to me. But, uh, as I was going through here, I noticed a lot, a lot of them look pretty rough. And so at first I was kind of freaking out, uh, thinking that they were full of, um, uh, iris spores. And, um, actually I don't think that's the case, but I think a lot of it is just, um, where they've kind of rotted. And then if you look, uh, underneath them, <clears throat> uh, there are tiny little holes underneath the rhyme zones. So I was, uh freaking out thinking that they were diseased they had iris spores or whatever and i got to researching and uh the holes here are actually from old roots that aren't there anymore so uh, anyway that cleared that up but just to be on the safe side i'm gonna go through these i'm gonna be choosy about which ones i pick i'm gonna cut off um like the parts that are questionable and then uh, the ones that I do keep, I will be putting them in this wash tub. Uh, this is, I'm going to put a gallon of water in here and about a cup of white uh, vinegar. Uh, it also says you can use bleach, but I don't have bleach, so <laughs> surprisingly. I don't have bleach, so I'm using uh, vinegar instead. So I will slosh them around in here, let them sit and uh, disinfect, and then I will rinse them off real good, let them sit in the sun for a few minutes, and then um, I'm going to plant them. So that's what I'm going to do. Hope everybody is having a wonderful Mother's Day today. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Uh, so I want to get busy. I also got mulch today. We ran up to Lowe's and got a truck full of mulch So I'll be laying that so this video is going to be kind of a day in the life kind of uh, video uh, I also got a bunch of cardboard from my uh, mom and them. They were they've been moving and uh, unboxing some stuff also my husband got some from work, so I will be laying that out in a uh, in the gardens and putting mulch over top all right you guys so I'm just going through here and I'm basically gonna cut off um, the bad part where are we at here so you can see how this the end of this rhizome is kind of rotten so I'm gonna cut it off about right there and then I'm gonna pull all the brown leaves off and stuff like that around the bottom and then this one's good, so I'm going to put it in my solution of a gallon of water and a cup of vinegar. So this one here, really bad. I don't even know what I'm going to do with this one. Um, so I'm hope, hoping this is just from where a bad location or it just kind of got rotten over time. And uh, hopefully it doesn't have any disease or... Um, iris spores so I might save this one but I'm going to cut most of that off and I did watch a video I follow probably one of my first garden channels that I followed or found on YouTube is uh, Wisconsin Garden uh, Richard and Lynn uh, husband and wife they uh, do a lot of gardening and they have over a thousand videos on their channel, so uh, anything that you want to learn about, you can pretty much find on their channel. And they also do monthly garden tours and stuff like that. Uh, pretty cool couple, I like them. So one of my favorites I recommend if you are looking for a garden channel to follow. So anyway, where I was going with that... Um, they did, I did see a video on uh, them doing this to their irises. Um, so yeah, this I think this is just something you kind of have to do. I think they said every three to five years. Um, just to check on them and um, it's also good to d divide them. 
another thing they do when they were transplanting them or cleaning them up uh, since it was kind of past the prime really for the time of year for them to do their show uh, they cut cut them down to about uh, I don't know three inches uh, just so when they transplanted them to a different area in their garden they were kind of nice and neat so um, I'm gonna do that with a couple of these I probably won't do it to this one <laughs> I don't know if you can see that but it does have one bloom on it um, obviously these are she said they were lavender so hopefully they have that grape juice smell so yeah there's that one um, I might go ahead and cut clean this up a little bit but I'll keep the one with the bloom on it I hope that's just a uh, lava rock there all right into the solution it goes. And most of these will probably get tossed. This one here actually looks pretty good. I don't know if I'm in in the screen or not hopefully it's focused there we go so if you, you ever get irises or you um, are digging some up and moving on and you see those uh, here's a good example of those holes it looks like or dots on the bottom of them that is not from a worm or any kind of insect that is just where old roots have been Cut the end off of this one. And don't forget when you're trimming anything really uh, with scissors or cutters or pruners, uh, it's always good to uh, have a alcohol wipe or something to clean them with before you go on to the next thing. Because uh, if something does have a disease, you're, you might end up spreading it to other plants in your garden. That won't be good. Alright you guys, I'm going to work on this wagon of irises and I will show you guys what I come up with. All right, so I've got them in a tub full of, I think it's two gallons of water. Uh, so I put in two gallons of the vinegar. I'm gonna sit in here for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, then I'll rinse them off really good. And then I will start planting them. Um, not real sure where they're gonna go yet. So I'll have to walk around the garden a little bit and figure that out. I wanna show you the how the purple salvias are doing 
really happy with them. Looking pretty good. I don't know if it's coming out, the color is coming out good on the camera, but I really love the darker purple and almost a blue. And then dark purple and blue. I like the alternating of the colors there. Alright, next task. <laughs> I'm looking around everywhere and there's so many tasks, but um, I'm going to take the wagon out to the truck and I'm going to start filling it up with the mulch. Lambs are looking really good there. I'll probably take a few cuttings and pieces from the back flower beds of this lamb's ear and uh, put maybe three or four more through here. I'm really liking repetition in the garden. I think it's um, it's good for the eye, but um, I don't know. I really, really like that, especially in borders. So anyway, squirrel. Roses, knockout roses are starting to bloom. love how bright the spirea shrubs are. Alright, 20 bags of brown mulch. Doesn't go far. I'm trying to decide if I want to start mulching in the front garden bed over here or if I want to start in the back. Uh, I think the bigger eyesore is that plastic back there, so I will probably start in the back uh, because I do plan on uh, doing a lot more planting in this flower bed here. Uh, just real quick, and all of this will be covered up. That's the go with the um, cardboard. I'm going to be laying the cardboard down through here and around the shrubs and stuff to block out and choke out the grass. And really, I need to get in here and clean, clean this uh, creeping Charlie out of here from this beautiful Wajilia. This is Wine and Roses Wajilia. And really, both of these shrubs, I probably should have pushed them back a little bit because my border, they're right at the border or the edging of this uh, flower bed, so. I don't know. Anyway, I do plan on uh, as close as I can get onto these stumps. If I can't get these stumps out, I'm going to plant um, some type of hydrangea, uh, the ones that get the white blooms on them. But um, there's so many varieties, so I'm not even sure which variety I'm going to go with. But uh, it will be a hedge of those through there. Like I mentioned before, there's that yellow rose doing okay it was transplanted two weeks ago from the back garden all right so anyway I'm gonna unload the mulch and then I will show you guys where I'm gonna start the mulching for this this round of mulch <laughs> it don't go far all right friends got all the mulch Brought back to the back, and here is the first little load of cardboard. So I gotta bring all of this back to the back. Um, this is what a lot of people use. I think most people will call it the no dig method. Um, instead of having to dig up all that grass in your landscaping or flower beds or whatever, you can put um, a layer or two of the cardboard. So that's what I'm gonna do back in the back. Um, where that uh, plastic is laying and all of that around there needs to be mulched. So that is the next project and task at hand. All right, y'all, I got the cardboard brought back out here. This would be a nice time for a garden tour, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get my task done here, but um, as you can see, this is the area that needs to be mulched. A lot of it all the way to the dog pen um, my mom and stepdad just moved 
I think I already mentioned this, but they just moved uh, into their new house and they have a lot of cardboard and I asked them if I could take it away and they said, you absolutely can. So it is a win-win for both of us. The cardboard is out of their way and uh, I am using it, I am repurposing it for something else. So anyway, that is the next little chore I wanna do. I'm probably going to have to cut some of this to be able to fit it around my different perennials and my shrubs and iris there. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that and then I will show you guys how it turns out. So I thought I'd show you guys something. Uh, as I was going to put the mulch up under these branches here, on the bluebeard shrub nice foliage that green gray silvery foliage in the summer and then late uh late summer early fall it gets those blue uh puffy uh blooms on them uh like i said it's called a blue bluebeard shrub anyway uh the branches of this shrub have touched the ground as they've gotten bigger and if you can see there uh, they began to form roots on the ground so I'll be cutting this and uh, I'll be making some uh, making a shrub out of it so yeah I just thought that was kind of cool Well, friends, I hate to cut this short, but I'm going to have to make this a part two video. As usual, my time gets away from me really fast. So we actually have a meatloaf and sides uh, we're making, and we're going to go to my mom's tonight at their new house and uh, celebrate Mother's Day. So hopefully all of you mothers out there are having a wonderful day today. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, stay tuned for part two and uh, hopefully I'll have this whole if not the whole thing most of it hopefully uh, mulched so again I was excited about finding the little uh, rootings of uh, the bluebeard shrub I actually found two more pieces so I'm going to get those potted up and um, anyway again if you like this video give me a thumbs up I would really appreciate it it would help out my channel a lot. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. So if you want to see more of my garden journey, please subscribe. And you guys have a great Sunday night. Take care, friends.